Folks, it is time. I'm recording this video in the middle of the Toronto Raptors game. They're currently down 31-51 or whatever the heck it was once I sort of put the TV to the side and said, I just need to record this video right now because, frankly, people that have been watching the videos, been watching all the Raptors Digest vids know I have a soft spot for pretty well every single Toronto Raptors player. 95% of the guys that put on that Raptors jersey, I look at and just say, hey, they're they're my guy. I'm going to support them. I hate to see them trade it. Obviously, we react to every like, report and rumor and stuff on this channel and things along those lines. But I'm generally of the opinion of giving every player on the Toronto Raptors their fair shot as I'm a homer, I'm biased, all that type of stuff. That's the point of the Raptors Digest, to give a fan's perspective on this Toronto Raptors team. But right now, this Raptors group, even though I love the players on this roster, I'm a massive fan of Scotty Barnes, OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam. I really like what Dennis Schroeder has done coming into this team this season. Jakob Pertl, we were pumped to see him back last year. And even off the bench, guys like Precious Achua, I think there's potential there. I'm impressed that Malachi Flynn shoveled his career out of the mud and is probably going to get a second NBA contract. Even the deeper bench guys, you know, Chatty Thaddeus Young, we were pumped when we took him away from Goran Dragic. Boucher has had a soft spot for pretty well any Toronto Raptors fans. Being from Quebec, you know, the slingshot shot, the energy he can provide. There are players on this team that are good, that would hurt me to see, get traded, let go. Gary Trent Jr. obviously is a bucket getter. There was a point where Riker and I were screaming on these videos that he could be the Raptors' groat at some point. But, man, this Raptors team right now, and again, I'm stopping this in the middle of this Raptors-Hornets game. I'm not sure how it's going to end up. It might end up being an extremely close game, an outing. You know, the Raptors might still end up being blown out. Sure, they heck, they might end up winning this game, and I have to record a different reaction after this one. But right now, I am just deflated as a Toronto Raptors fan. Watching these games, watching what's happening with this current core group, and we've heard the speculation, we've heard the reports. This is not me diving into any more Sacramento Kings, Indiana Pacers, Atlanta Hawks, trade rumors for Siakam OG. Because they're going to come and we're going to cover them. We're going to break down all of the inner goings on this team. But right now, I am just not excited. I don't have that internal hope, that excitement that the Raptors could turn things around. They could get these wins. We just played the Charlotte Hornets. And I don't want to bag on the Charlotte Hornets because they have some talented guys. I've always been a Terry Rozier kind of fan. B.J. Washington, Brandon Miller, Miles Bridges is there, you know whatever you think of him, but they have some talented guys on that roster, but we should be smacking the Charlotte Hornets without LaMelo Ball. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, and right now, down by 20 as of recording this video, the last time I checked, to the Charlotte Hornets early on, looking to moralize, no one, you know, playing egregiously bad, we are just playing without that sense of urgency, just being content with being extremely mid. And yes, we go on our runs where we look great, then we go on our runs where we look horrible, but the continuous, continuing factor, the continuing sort of theme for this Raptors team over the course of the season has been the lack of hope, the lack of just optimism from this current core group because we play teams like the Miami Heat. Even though the games get close, it feels like just the Raptors aren't able to kick it into that third gear and say, hey, we can win this game. We can turn things around the same way they had for year after year after year during the Lowry era, the Kawhi era. Heck, even the Fred Van Vliet, Pascal Siakam era, the first couple sort of a little bit of maybe the one season where we were the fifth seed. But this Raptors team had an identity. They had a you know, heat culture, so to speak, that we had our own thing going on with the Toronto Raptors where no one wanted to play us. We executed on the defensive end. We'd always give it our all. Sure, we might be inconsistent. We'd have our weird nights shooting the basketball, but no one ever wanted to play the Toronto Raptors, even when we were bad. We had this hope. We had this fire. We could immediately come back from any deficit, from any loss. It looks surmountable for this Raptors squad. And frankly, that has been long gone. That has been long dead over the past couple seasons. And right now, Masai Ujiri is hoping for that to come back because we have talent on this roster. We have players that won an NBA championship on our team right now. But frankly, 
It just doesn't look like it right now. So the Raptors, again, they have a couple weeks. They have a month or so to really see if they can turn it around. But this should have started a week ago. This sense of urgency, this immediate sort of reaction in terms of, hey, we need to kick things in the gear the same way Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan did in 2013 or 2014 during that season. The same way two of those guys led the charge once Rudy Gay was traded, once all the trade rumors percolated for Kyle Lowry going to New York, DeMar DeRozan going any which way. When those rumors started in Masai Ujiri's first season with the Toronto Raptors, do you know what happened? Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan took that group of Gravis Vasquez, John Salmons, Chuck Hayes, Tupac, you know, Jonas Valanciunas, that group worked, they turned things around, and they built up this mentality saying, hey, we don't lose games, we're going to be putting up a fight every single time we get up there on a court, and just have fun with it, come out there on the court, give the fans some excitement, we're not sure what's going to happen next week, if we're going to be on different rosters, but we're going to fight our way, and that kick-started an era in Toronto Raptors basketball, which culminated into a championship. Probably would have culminated into another finals appearance if it wasn't for the pandemic. I mean, that's where the Toronto Raptors did when they were in a similar position to where they were right now. But frankly, this current group isn't showing that off, isn't showing that potential right now. And maybe it takes a Rudy Gay trade that doesn't completely tear down your roster. You know, we keep a Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRose, we keep a OG Ananobi, Scotty Barnes, or even a Pascal Siak. We'll see what ends up happening. But we keep one of these guys and then the new looked new team, you know, switches us into a new era of Raptors basketball. I'm not writing that off as a possibility, but frankly, right now, the team looks demoralized. I'm looking at the screen on the side. Darko looks sad there on the screen looking at his notes and stuff. And, you know, Raptors fans are just kind of sick of what's been going on out here on the court. And that's why a lot of people are calling for moves, calling for changes and stuff. But regardless of if it's a transaction, you know, a blockbuster trade, or just something happening, something changing in the eyes and the perspectives of the Toronto Raptors players on the basketball court, Something has to change with this Toronto Raptors group because it's not just this loss to the Hornets that's going on here right now. It's not the loss to the Miami Heat. It's not the loss to the Cavs, the Knicks, all these types of t teams that we should be beating if we want to have any hope of being a squad that can even just make the playoffs this year, right? It's not that. It's just the, the whole aura of Toronto Raptors basketball, all the words, all the puff pieces, all the quotes from Masai Ujiri, Ryakovich, Nurse before this, Siakam, Fred when he was here, Schroeder, everyone that's been putting on Toronto Raptors gear over the past couple of years have said the right things and have got us excited, you know, month by month. Oh, things are about to change. A move is about to happen. Don't put your phones down. The culture has shifted. New offense, new this, new that. That's been a whole lot of talk and a whole lot of the same garbage that has been put out there on the basketball court for the past three seasons. So you know what? I don't know. It's time for changes to occur. It's time for change to actually happen in this group. And whether it's a move, whether it's this, that, the coaching change, even though I'm not bashing on Ryakovich, I'm not bashing on what Nick Nurse did. That hasn't seemed to have that big of an impact right now in terms of what's going on with this roster. This is not a logical rant in terms of what specifically needs to be fixed, but I'm saying something has to change because as a diehard Raptors fan, as a guy that talks about this team day in, day out, out here on YouTube spewing all this type of stuff, I mean... Even I'm sick of what's going on out there on the court at this point. So hopefully something ends up going on. I'm frustrated by the product that's going out there on the basketball court. I'm frustrated that you know none of the actual problems are dealing with the same issues year after year. I guess we dealt with adding a center last season, so that's it. But the depth is still a problem and all that type of stuff. I mean, at least the Blue Jays right now are trying to make a push for Shohei Otani, trying to make that push. But again, they might fall short as well. We'll see what ends up happening. It's tough being a Toronto sports fan right now here at this point, but this is just a long-winded rant. I felt like I needed to do watch in the middle of this Toronto Raptors game, and maybe this is the start, the second half. They're great. I'll still be watching. I'll still be covering everything, but I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about this Toronto Raptors squad in the comment section below. You guys are the best to make this far. We're going to get through this together, Digest family. I'm going to be on the next live watch along with Marcel as well. 
lots of uh, lots of fun stuff coming but i'm reaching a breaking point with my optimism my hope for this team so i felt like i need to throw out there a rant on the internet before this game is over before i have a meltdown watching this uh specific basketball game against the hornets but you guys are best friend goes far subscribe to the channel because a new era of toronto raptors basketball starts tonight that's that's my take i don't really know i'm signing off cheers <laughs>